Welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play Arc Genesis series. Today I'm going to show you how to get over a thousand stone and a thousand wood per minute in Arc Genesis with a really safe and easy trick. And this will get you all the supplies you need to build huge stone fortresses anywhere in the Arc Genesis biomes, but you can get all the materials from a super safe area in the ocean. This will also be one of the fastest and easiest ways to grind up levels and get to be a high level before you jump into some of the most dangerous biomes in Arc Genesis. And since we just tamed this pair of mammoths in the last episode, we're also going to breed them and get our first baby mammoth for our mammoth breeding program. And if you watch this video till the end, we're going to tame some monkeys just for fun because, I mean, you're not a real pirate until you have a monkey or a parrot, right? And seagulls just don't cut it. So be sure to watch this whole episode. It will be really helpful and give you a lot of great tips for your Arc Genesis adventures. And make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell to enable all notifications because we have so much great content coming your way and you're not going to want to miss any of that. So let's get started. So before we get started, apparently our Dodicarus is going to go to the bathroom. Uh, the first thing that we did here is we took our Dodicarus and Mammoth and teleported to the southeast section of the ocean biome. And this island is really high up in the air. There's no good way to get up or down from it, but it is loaded with trees. And as you can see here, now that I've got a saddle on my Mammoth, I can just use the regular fire button to chop down trees crazy fast. Fast. We're also harvesting all of the berries nearby, so the slowest part of this process is getting rid of all the berries that we pick up. Now, you can use the uh, search bar to type in berry, or just B-E-R-R, -R, to select all the berries in its inventory, and you can unload those, use the narco berries for tranks. You can get tons of tranks this way, and uh, you can use the narco berries plain without actually turning them into tranks if you want to just keep a dino uncommon. Conscious. So you can save yourself a lot of tranks that way too. But uh, the f most important thing is we're just dumping all the berries because we're getting so overweight we can't move really quickly. Now a mammoth has a really nice special ability that reduces the weight of wood by 75%, which means it can carry four times its weight in wood. And that means you can get thousands of wood on this thing before it's even going to have any trouble. Mammoths have great amounts of wood weight carrying capacity too, but as long as we keep dumping piles and piles of berries down, we'll get all the wood we need. And we've got over a thousand wood. Now the reason I chose the southeast island is because we have these salt pillars, and if you harvest those with a pick, you'll get lots of salt. But if you harvest them with a dodicarus, you get nothing but stone. Check that out. Now the uh, North Island also has some actual stone deposits. You'll get stone and sand from those, and you can get some flint that way if you're using an ankylosaur. But this has actually got a ton of these salt pillars, and you can get you know a couple thousand stone really quickly just by smashing those. And one nice thing about living in the ocean is you can teleport around grab all the resources you need off of an island, and then just come back a couple hours later when everything is respawned, as long as you don't build here, which you can't build on this island, then everything's going to respawn in a couple hours and you'll get all of your stone and wood back, and you can just keep rinsing and repeating this process. Now I'm standing right between the two of these dinos, I parked my Dodicarus next to the Mammoth because the Dodicarus also has I think a 75% reduction on the weight of stone. And as long as I park them next to each other where I can reach both of their inventories at the same time, I can just keep crafting without having to worry about carrying the weight back and forth. We also got a ton of thatch from the mammoth, but you can also get additional thatch using the dodicarus to smash trees, and it'll get just thatch and lots of it. And those are the only materials we need for building stone structures. So at this point, we've got piles of materials, and we can just start crafting stuff like nobody's business, and that's going to give us lots of experience really quickly. 
The mammoth also makes a great walking storage box for any of the stone structures we've completed, so we can keep doing this process until we've totally run out of stone on this island, and then just teleport all of our dinos and our stuff back to whatever base location we want, and that way we can carry all the materials over and start building with them. Of course, if you just need the raw materials, you can use the teleportation to take the loaded up dinosaur over to whatever one of your bases need the materials there, but it's way faster if you just craft them here and keep gathering materials. So using this technique I was able to go like, I don't know, I think I gained like 30 levels in an hour or two as I was building all the materials I needed to make this huge bog base and a nice raft which I'm going to show you guys in the next couple of episodes. So now I'll show you how I was actually breeding our mammoths while we were doing all this. Now the main reason I went through so much trouble to tame a male and female mammoth at the same time is because I was hoping to start my mammoth breeding program as quickly as possible. So now that we have a male and female, I parked them both on the southeast island where they can get plenty of berries really quickly and just set them to start enable mating. And right here you can see they've both got hearts over their heads, which means they are mating. And after a couple of minutes, the female, if you look at her, will show a gestation bar. Now mammoths are way easier to uh, breed than most dinos because instead of laying eggs they just have that gestation bar which goes up until it's full and as soon as that's full we get this cute little baby mammoth. We had to claim him real quickly with E to make sure he didn't wander off because we will never find this little guy in these bushes up here and uh, there we go we now have him claimed and we can get him to follow us so we can actually see him. We made a nice little clear spot right here because we harvested all the berries with one swipe from one of his parents parents and hopefully we can see him now now you've got to be here when your babies are born because they will immediately start starving to death so uh, check it out it's a cute little guy we're gonna make sure we keep loading up berries and he'll eat them really quickly and it looks like this is actually a female which is awesome because now we can breed twice as fast we'll have two mammoths both producing babies at the same time and mammoths takes a very long time to breed so keep that in mind you want to be real careful to make sure you don't lose any babies and I'm just gonna stay right here while I'm gathering and make sure it doesn't starve we'll have to just keep loading up berries into its inventory but we have an unlimited limited supply of those so it should be pretty easy and once it hits juvenile stage we can actually just park it next to a feeding trough that's got hundreds of berries in it and we don't really have to worry about it but this guy's inventory will slowly be able to handle more berries and after I don't know 30 minutes we should be able to leave him alone for 20-30 minutes because he'll have enough berries to make sure she doesn't starve. Now a great thing about Argenesis which makes it way easier to breed dinos is you can use a cryopod to freeze the baby as soon as it's born and if you don't have time to stay with it and make sure it has enough food you can just cryopod it and it will pause and then when you're ready and you're gonna hang around the base for a while you can just pull it back out of the cryopod and continue letting it grow up. And once this baby grows up, we'll breed it again right away, and eventually we'll have tons of mammoths and enough to have one in every single base. So now I'll show you how we tamed and bred a couple of monkeys and tell you why they're actually relatively useful. So while we were doing all this stuff in the southeast island, I noticed a couple of Mesopithecus or monkeys just wandering around, and these guys are actually relatively helpful shoulder pets. They work pretty well as a backpack, and uh, if you're getting attacked by a dinosaur, they will actually throw poo at them. Now if you're familiar with plant species X turrets, it's kind of a super nerfed version of that, so it actually slows pursuing dinos just a little bit. So having a monkey on your back is actually a a great thing in Arc Genesis because it might be just enough to slow down your pursuing dinos and keep you alive. Monkeys are actually a little bit helpful as a backpack too because you can boost their weight pretty high and then fill them up with items and carry them on your shoulder and they'll help you carry stuff. So a monkey is definitely not a game changer and they're hardly worth taming and keeping alive but since we've got a male and a female at a pretty low level we'll see if we can tame them. So in order to tame a monkey you have to put medjo berries or any kind of 
Raspberry in the last slot in your hotbar, and then you can walk up to the dino and just hit the action key to feed it a berry, and it'll gain just a little bit of taming. Now we're going to use Mejo Berries because we have tons of them from those mammoths, and it'll be pretty easy to tame these guys up. They're low level, you don't really need a high level monkey, and uh, the hardest part about it is keeping track of them because they disappear into the bushes on these southern islands really quickly. But uh, as long as we can listen, it's actually really helpful if you have the sound on. You can hear where the monkey is closer, they make a lot of noise while they're running around, and uh, eventually find them in the underbrush. So as long as we keep track of these guys, we can eventually tame them if we just keep feeding them as soon as they're hungry. And after a little bit, there we go, we now have our tamed monkey. And I'm gonna name this one Jack. If you're a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, you'll know why. Now while I was gathering stuff, I also tamed a female monkey and was able to breed the two of them, and they're pretty quick and easy to breed, just like mammoths, just a whole lot faster and easier, and they grow up much faster too. And before long, I had quite a few little monkeys running around. And I named the baby Male Chimp, because it's a male monkey, but also I use the Male Chimp platform all the time at work, so I do internet marketing for a living. So that's how we got all the materials and levels we needed to do a lot of what you'll see in the next couple episodes in the Arc Genesis Live Let's Play series. And very soon we're going to tame some ankylosaurs, build some metal gathering bases, and we're going to set up a huge taming pen in the bog biome along with a big fortress where we can have a main base in the bog and tame all kinds of crazy huge dinos very soon. So I know this episode didn't have tons of action, but hopefully it had a lot of helpful tips for you. And please give it a thumbs up if it helped you or if you enjoyed it at all. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to enable all notifications notifications because we have lots of helpful guides, tips, tricks, live streams, and let's plays coming your way, and you're not going to want to miss any of that. So until next time, I hope you have great fun on your Arc Genesis adventures, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video from the Ark Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. That helps us so much. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to enable all notifications because we have lots of awesome new Ark videos and live streams coming soon and you won't want to miss any of them. You can do so many awesome things in Ark, but it is really hard to figure out out on your own. Check out the links at the end of this video to browse our huge library of fun, clean, and helpful ARC guides, tips, tricks, live streams, and let's plays. If you would like to earn awesome rewards while supporting this channel, click the join button or link next to the subscribe button to learn more about our new channel memberships. You can also join our awesome Discord community at the link in the description of this video or on top of the channel homepage. And if you want to see my wife and I play lots of other fun video games together, visit our other YouTube channel, The Console Co-op Couple, using the link in the video description or in the channel homepage. And now I want to give a shout out to some of the biggest supporters of this channel. Sabo0283, Cole Parmenter, Wolf Girl Be Like, Austin Nagel, Kelly Razjak, Black Silver Ride, and Emmy Fisher. You guys are all awesome and we so appreciate your support. Now if you'd like to be a monthly supporter and get a shout out at the end of our videos, check out the join button next to the subscribe button for more information about that. And for everyone else, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.